Good morning, my homo sapien and alien and, well, non-corporeal friends, if you may be watching. It's once again 7 o'clock in the morning here on Tech of Tomorrow, and we're here with another, yet another, do you believe it, launch. But this time, it's not about graphics cards. This time, it's about CPUs. You guys have all been waiting for it, and now Intel's Haswell has finally hit the market. That's right, and there are actually 13 different models that are hitting the market. The lineup starts off with the Intel i5-4570. Now, this CPU is 3.2 gigahertz, and it's about $200 coming to the market, and it goes all the way up to the new i7-4770R. Now, the one that we're gonna be reviewing today is the new i7-4770K. This is the only unlocked chip of the entire i7 line. There's actually one of the i5 that's also unlocked, and we'll talk about that in a second. So that's it, it's launch day. Let's jump in, talk about a few of the different CPUs, then jump in about the test station, and then finally on to the benchmarks, and then let's see, hey, is this thing worth your money? All right, folks, so like I said, there's gonna be 13 new CPUs for the desktop environment, starting off with the Intel Core i5-4570 that has four cores, four threads, a base clock frequency of 3.2 gigahertz, and a turbo speed of 3.6 gigahertz. There are a total of three different varieties in this series, as you can see in the charts. Two of the models offer no hyper-threading, but the i5-4570T has that feature. Albeit that it has a clock speed of 2.9 gigahertz and a turbo speed of 3.6 gigahertz, it also has only four megabytes instead of six megabytes of level three cache. The i5-4570T, however, is the only desktop i5 that does have hyper-threading, as all the other models are seen with its absence. All the 4570 models feature Intel's 4600 graphics. The TDP is also pretty high on these SKUs, with the i5-4570 having a TDP of 84 watts. Now, I won't keep talking, folks, and go over every single one of the CPUs that are there. You guys can see there's also four more i5 CPUs. And then at the very last, we have six more of the i7 CPUs. Now, we have the 47.7 series in many different flavors. We have the T, the S, the Vanilla, as well as the R. But the CPU that we're reviewing today is the i7 4770K processor. It comes unlocked. It's hitting the market at about $339, has a total TDP of 84 watts, has four cores, eight threads, has a base frequency of 3.5 gigahertz, a turbo frequency of 3.9. It also features memory of 1333 and 1600 megahertz, has eight megabytes of level three cache, and features Intel's latest HD 4600 graphics. For those of you who are wondering what we're testing with, we're actually using a test bed that we were given by Inwin. It's the X-Frame, it's actually a pretty nice thing. So we decided to go ahead and use Asus's new Maximus 6, that's right, their Maximus 6 Hero motherboard in combination with our new 47.7K. We're also using a cooler called the Heligon by the people over at Silverstone. We're using 16 gigabytes of Kingston's HyperX memory that we have an XMP profile set at 2133 megahertz. For our boot drive, we have got a Patriot Wildfire 120 gigabyte SSD. And for our main drive, our media drive, we have the Western Digital one terabyte. Now this is basically the same test system that you guys, the users chose for us to use on our video card, only moved up to Haswell. So for those people who'd like more information on our test system, the CPU or the chipset, check out everything over on our website, www.techoftomorrow.com, which you guys can see in the link in the description below. Now with that said, Let's jump in and rock out to the bench.
Hey, Elric, wake up! Oh, okay. Well, at this point, after being up multiple days doing this stuff, uh, I could actually sleep to the benchmark song. I find it relaxing. Now, we actually got our test kit late, so we didn't really get a chance to do any really overclocking stuff with this. We'll get to that later for you folks. What we did, however, get was a lot of good comparisons for you guys to go with. So let me take off my old glasses here because uh, actually these things work better when I'm trying to see things up close and see far away. So Haswell, whew, okay, Z87 and Haswell. Will you want it, do you want it, and why would you buy it? Now, if you're somebody who you have technology that is Sandy Bridge or older technology, then you probably definitely want to consider upgrading for a damn fact because there's all kinds of new stuff that makes it great, you know what I mean? Power efficiency, off the charts, really good stuff. The graphics that are on board, they're a little bit better. The new HD 4600 is better than the HD 4000. That's for damn sure. Now, if you're somebody who owns an i7 3770K though, however, and you're a gamer, uh, I just, I can't say my right mind why I would recommend to you why well, you need to go out and spend $500. I mean, you'd be better off buying another video card and just pumping up your game and your video thing because there's just not that much of a difference. And by $500, I mean because you have to purchase both the CPU and the motherboard. Your LGA 1155 motherboard would no longer work. You are going to have to purchase an LGA 1150 motherboard to make that new Haswell CPU have a home. So you guys saw in our test bed, we used the GTX 680 because we know lots of folks own that card. And we saw between one and three frames per second increase between using Haswell and Ivy Bridge. Now I just don't feel like that's even enough reason to give an upgrade to. All the great benefits that I see with Haswell really are gonna benefit more people in the mobile segment. Things like, you know, power efficiency. I mean, that's really cool, but when you're plugged into your wall, do you think saving, you know, a couple cents here and there really gonna matter all that much? I don't think people are gonna go, wow, hey man, check it out, man. I upgraded a Haswell, my bill was like $1,000 less. Not happening, you know what I'm saying? So, but on the other hand though, you're somebody who's taken that stuff on the road and you got yourself an ultrabook or something like that that would be really awesome technology because long battery life not getting hot being able to run for long periods of time hey that's very great stuff i just don't see for the desktop if you already have some that's very current really needing to upgrade but if you don't own anything at all hey i would definitely be jumping into haswell with the 1150 then jumping into the older stuff just because of the new technology involved we saw that with encoding and stuff like that, you actually saved a little bit of time. So in that arena, there's actually a lot more improvements. If you're somebody who does video editing, you're somebody who does Photoshop and that type of stuff, a lot of productivity, you're gonna see a lot better results with Haswell. And those are some reasons to actually look into it. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this review. I apologize we didn't get you guys overclocking stuff. We promised to get to that really, really soon, but we wanna change it out to a water cooler at least. Maybe something better, we'll see what we work out but i hope you guys like this video and appreciate all of our time for staying up and doing it. and if so you guys know what to do i'm not even going to say it everything else will be down in the link in the description below we have our full written review on this so if you guys want to check that out make sure you do if you're not subbed and you'd like to be subbed and always see the stuff here on tech of tomorrow then hey make sure you hit that button see you later brothers and sisters i'm off to get some sleep